quantum finite volume method for computational fluid dynamics with classical input and output 이라는 제목으로 발표를 할 20학번 물리학과 20학번 윤여분입니다. 자 일단은 이제 그 이, 일단 이 제목만 보시면 아시겠지만 일단 이거는 그 CFD 컴퓨, 그 전산 유치 역학에다가 이제 퀀텀 알고리즘을 사용했을 때 어떻게 뭔가 달라질 것이냐에 대해서 대한 논문이고요. 일단은 가, 좀 나온 지가 얼마 안된 논문입니다. 2021년도에 나온 논문이고 그 이거를 하게 된 계기는 이제 제가 원래는 제가 지금 원래는 물리학과 있긴 하지만 물리학 주전공이 물리학과지만 이제 겨울방학 동안은 그 항공과에서 전산 유체 랩에서 개별 연구를 한 그게 있어서 같이 연결해서 하면은 좋을 것 같다 해서 하게 되었습니다. 아, 네. So since there are my foreigner friends, I'll I'll um continue to my presentation in English. So to begin with, let me first introduce about finite volume method. So this finite volume method is about solving an equation on the on some on some certain finite volume. So as you can see in this picture, let's say there are some fluid or flux flowing through them some certain closed volume. We will first divide this a certain finite volume into some pieces of nodes and edges, and we will calculate the flux for each node. So since you guys will not gonna kind of not familiar to this, let me give you a very, very, very simple um toy example. So let's say, let's say um there is a rod rod of 0.5 meters and and at at one end it is a 100 kelvin and at the other another end it's a 500 kelvin and we want to find out how shall we want to find the temp temperature distribution along this rod and how shall we do that of course theoretically if, since we learn from the general physics one we, we can just use the law of heat conduction and it will be shown like this and there should be some kind of boundary condition like this 100 and a 500 and the temperature distribution itself will show some linear distribution like this but in reality we cannot do that and also in reality we de we de uh, deal with some three-dimensional and very complicating systems so we cannot use this it is really hard to do this geriatrical scheme so what we do is this is this that's why we use finite volume method so this is some pictures so let's see let's follow the arrows okay so first we will divide this one finite rod into five five nodes so there is a node one two three four and five and there is a boundary condition which is 100 kelvin ta and one tb at each end and we already let's say we Let's assume that we already know the thermal conductivity of this rod, which is K. So the only um, physical law that we can we will use is this law of heat conduction. And what we're gonna do is we will apply this law of heat conduction for this small for each node. So for each node, we will divide this volume into this space it, in, the, in that certain volume, in that certain volume so we will apply the heat flux law of heat flux we will calculate the heat flux on this volume and we can for each for each node we can calculate the heat flux and how it gets in or how it gets out and so if we calculate the heat flux for each node it can it is calculated like this which is pretty much dirty and by and by simplify this equation it is just a one simple uh, first order algebra equation so if we solve this if we get this equation for each node which which is one two three four five so we will get five equations for each node and by solving this linear system we will get some because some distribution we can find the distribution 
of of temperature. So this is how this is just a very simple example about finite volume method, how it is applied in thermal dynamics. And if you want to make this, if you want to get more detailed result, what we have to do is just to div divide this rod into more small knots. Of course, that computational cost will increase, but the the um, accuracy will increase. So, yeah, this is a this is very one is very first example about finite volume method, and we were gonna do this. And to summarize finite volume method, so first thing we have to do is cut the certain volume into knots, and apply laws of physics for each knot, and calculate it and make a system of equation and just solve it. And this is how actually we can solve the Navier-Stokes equation on some certain moving flow. But of course, it takes tons of time. For solving Navier, for you applying this finite volume method, we have to um, make this knot into almost like a million or billion or more. So it takes tons of time, at least, yeah, at least O n, the kind of complexity is at least O n. So yeah, it takes time, and also the it it was not shown in this toy example. But if we do this in um more complicated system, that it is more we have to take more iterations to make these residuals to um go zero. So this is how this is pretty much how we get this, how we calculate or how we um, simulate the fluid, flow of fluid. But yeah, this this was, this, until this is just a um, classical thing. But from now on, what this paper introduced, what this paper suggested is that this is a time complexity for a classical computer, classical finite volume method algorithm for fluid dynamics. And by using some um, sophisticated quantum algorithms, we can make this n log epsilon over one, one over epsilon to this at least, at least less than this time complexity. And let me briefly introduce each, um, each, each is that this one is um, precision. And yeah, I will gonna introduce another one later. And n is um, number of knots. So we can actually um, get, we can actually make this better. Make, we can actually make this thing better for better, for better time complexity. And let's see how it is made. So, but before we start, like before we start about QFVM, even if we use good algorithms for solving linear system and, and but it takes time to make classical vari variables to quantum variables because of course, there are already um, good quantum algorithm for um, solving linear systems, yes. But generating an input from classical vari variables and, and updating vari variables for each iteration takes time. It takes time. So we have to solve this problem for making a very quantum algorithm for finite volume method. So let's see. So briefly introducing the steps of quantum finite volume method is that first we have to load the boundary condition and the geometrical condition on the memory. So this is an initialization steps and we have to solve it. For solving step, we're gonna use quantum linear solver. Uh, I just call it QLS. And also we're gonna use quantum preconditioner. And we, since we solve, uh, solve this one linear system, we're gonna update its variables to reduce the residues. And finally, we're gonna change, since, since the result from the QLS is um, not classical value, so we will change this quantum result to classical result. So this is a um, flow chart of how the QFVM is going. So let's start with initialization. So we have to generate input from classical variables. And to make this efficient, this paper suggested a 
quantum memory layout called QRAM. So this is how it's this is this is how it looks. So we will save some geometrical definition such as how the node is how the nodes are um, divided or how how the number of nodes or where the node is 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 that is saved at this part and physical variables such as um, initial values or boundary conditions will save at this part and lastly lastly this part is most important thing when conducting on finite volume method is that we will we have to call we have to update the residue for each each iterations. So in this paper suggests um residue some some tree to make a more efficient way to update this res residue. So QRAM is a one method that this paper suggested to make a more efficient way to initialize. So for just date loading, for loading a data, it takes a on. So since there's a n nodes, oh, and since there are n nodes, so n number of nodes, it takes on time complexity for loading a data. Of course, this step, loading a data, input loading a data itself is a very classical step. So this this time comp complexity also takes part in classical method. And also we have to we have to make this residue since since we have to pre, since we have to um solve the QLS, we have to make this residue sum tree classical residue sum tree into um residue vector which is quantum variable. So it takes O log n for O log n time complex complexity for this step. So this was initialization and now there's a QLS comes up. Of course, there are already um, good quantum linear solver for with, on the um, the prior prior studies that we have since. So this is the equation that we have to solve. And to solve this equation, that this paper use this all this kind of dirty kind of time complexity algorithm, which is suggested in the following paper. So we'll skip this part. And now the another thing that this paper did was using a quantum preconditioner. Now the condition number, we, we have to say the condition, we have to deal with the condition number first so that, so the what the condition number is, is that the linear, the linear equations represents that, it represents that extent, the solution can be affected by each iterations. So, for each iterations, the solution will change, and this is a this is a kind of um, kind of value that's showing how it is how much it is affected by each iterations. So, but as you can see at the prior at prior QLS algorithms, we can see that time complex plus time complexity is um, depending on this condition number kappa. So it would be much nice to make this kappa more or less. So to make this um, condition number more or less, we're gonna use preconditioner. We are, we're gonna make this preconditioner. So making this preconditioner, it takes um, O S over three time complexity. And this S is a um, sparsity number which is the largest number of index, the largest number of non-zero index in each row or column. So yeah, let's get to the next part. So another time comp time that consumed is that when it, when it happens when updating a variables. So in each iterations, the residues are updated and to update its its residues, we have to search down this residue some tree, which is um and look and later layers, and since the since the number of changing residues, the number of updating residue will be s. So at at 
at updating variables, it will take O, S, log N time complexity. So, so far, we have seen many algorithms. So, this is the last part. So, we have to make this quantum result to classical result. This is the last part. And we have to change QLS result to classical output. So how that is done is that we call it, there are one algorithm called L infinity tomography. And what this is, is that this algorithm makes this quantum output into the class near, make this algorithm makes nearest classical result for L infinity norm and which takes O log n, another O log n time complexity. So by combining the, all the algorithms that I said that, and we can get this result of a um, more, um, much better time complexity for this finite value method. And when the number of node is much larger than the uh, inverse square of precision, it performs much better. And at the last part of this, and at the last part of this paper, is shows very, it shows briefly that um, at the three, at the, at certain um, precision, that it shows um, very similar, very almost same result as a classical, classical finite volume method. So to, so let, so let me just summarize uh, my presentation into three lines. So, okay, of course that we know that um, for, if we use quantum algorithms, we can solve, we can solve uh, much better, much faster in solving um, linear systems. But there were two main problems for QFVM, which was generating an input from classical variables. And second is that Time taking takes the time taking for updating variables, and second, and to solve the above problem, this paper suggested um, one way is that QRAM using a quantum memory layer layout, uh, layout which we call QRAM, and also the second was that using a quantum quantum linear server and other algorithms such as preconditioners or more, and lastly, yeah. And lastly, and at um at really large, not at really large number of nodes, we can we were able to see that QFVM pre has much better performance than the classical finite volume method. So this is end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Any questions, please? Okay, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I personally think uh, this is very interesting, interesting result. So uh, my question is that, uh, just, just to make it clear, asymptotic cost decreased because of QRM and, and HH, uh, quantum linear solver? That's the main result of the of this paper. Yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah, I think the main reason that it is decreased is that yeah, because of quantum linear server and the um, QRAM. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can I ask how how they realize this uh, QRAM in in their in their experiment? Did they that, just make a calculations of everything? Or? That is actually the part that I actually cannot understand about this paper is that it actually, it does not clear, like it does not, they just say that they just performed the simulation results that like they just, they did not put more detail on this simulation results. So that is, that is actually another question that I have in my mind too. Um, about about conducting a calculation. Uh, can I can I have one question? Oh yes, go ahead, uh, please. Thank you for your presentation, and I'm just wondering. 
I know the form of classical data, okay? Yes. But in quantum, what is the specific form of quantum data? How to convert the classical data to quantum data? Uh, actually, so, um, actually that part, that, that, that is actually a um, good um, question, which was, which was one, which was one part, one part that I can really can understand in this paper. <laughs> yeah, because like it just said that, oh yeah, of course we all know that we need some kind of initial value from residue some tree. And to use this QLS, we have to make this quantum uh, like quantum input. But what paper was said was like making um what is it? Using some kind of a uh, what do we call operators to make this thing? Uh, yeah. So that was actually another part that I really can understand it, since uh, I don't have that much base about the quantum mechanics. So. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. I, I think the quantum data is maybe um, one kind of quantum state. I think. Uh, yes. But yes. I, I'm not sure because uh, I doesn't read this paper, so. Um, okay, yeah, I think that you. makes sense too, yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah, maybe I think yeah, making this classical um, value, classical values to um, some kind of a- Quantum state. Quantum state is, that actually does really makes sense. Okay. But I was Thank really, I, was a, I wasn't able to understand that kind of a mathematical <laughs> <laughs> method. <laughs> And can I have one more question? Oh, yes. And I think the QLS, Quantum Linear System Solver, is very important to part of this presentation. And QLS can be used for another system or can be used for only a QFVM? Oh, yeah, this, this algorithm is, these algorithms are general. Yeah, I think this algorithm, general algorithm. Ah, okay, thank you. Which is shown here. Here. Ah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Are there any questions? So if I understand correctly, the, so the cost of initialization is still order of n? Oh, oh yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. Um, at this initialization part, especially here, mm -hmm. this loading a data part is O n, but still, even for the um classical uh classical computer, this costs same. So, mm -hmm. yeah, for comparison, we just I just um omitted this part, omitted uh, this part. I thought the classical simulation of Navier-Stokes equation is order of n. It, it, uh, According to your slide. Excuse me. Um oh, oh, this this part is just uh, just for loading a data. This part is just just for loading a data. Like we have to load um n data at the RAM. So this is a comp time complexity for that matter. Mm. Just so inputting our data. We RAM. assume assume we have a loaded data and yeah. then do a uh, cost analysis. Yeah, oh, exactly. Okay. okay, okay. I see. Well, any more questions? Okay, so uh, if you guys don't have any more questions, uh, let's uh, end this meeting. And uh, thank you for preparing this presentation, Yamun. And well, see, see you next week. Mm -hmm.